Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to play with some new, some new to me makeup. And as you can tell, my eyebrows are not yet filled in because I have some new brow products I want to display here with you guys. And I also have the Temptalia Sydney Grace Blue Eyeshadow Palette that I wore in a will I buy it and the overwhelming comments were please do a tutorial. So that is today's video. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. So as many of you now know, I have an online beauty consulting service, which is where you get the chance to talk to me through a video chat one-on-one, -on -one, and you get to just pick my brain about your beauty concerns, whether you're looking for help navigating the world of cosmetics because it can be overwhelming, or if you want a fresh set of eyes on your current makeup routine, it's up to you. So to make the appointment, click the link in the description box down below. All right, let's go into the brows. For me, doing the brows is the first makeup step. So a few days ago, Benefit Cosmetics kindly sent me their new brow pomade, and I've been testing these out, and now that I have a good handle on how these work, I thought I would share them with you. I have two shades here, the shade 3, a warm light brown, and 3.5, a neutral medium brown. This is described as a brow pomade, five grams of product, a full pigment brow pomade. It's supposed to be 36 hours of wear, waterproof, smudge proof, easy to use, stroke onto the brow with a dual ended angled eyebrow brush, and then you can blend with a spoolie. Now the brush here with the angled brush for application and the spoolie side here. This is sold separately, but it really is important to have both the angle side and the spoolie side. Something to note is that this pomade is very soft. You'll see here that when I first dipped into this one here, uh, I went a little bit hard. I just thought for some reason that this pomade would be a bit more stiff. Some pomades are a bit harder and waxier. This is almost more like a gel. So you really don't have to press hard whatsoever. You barely just put your brush in and you get the pigment that you want. And what's nice is that there's this brush wiper. So if you get too much product on your spoolie or on your brush here, you can just wipe it off. This is what this is meant for, just to wipe off the excess, which I think is really nice. So what I think I'll do, since I have two shades, the three warm light brown, and then the 3.5 neutral medium brown, I will do one eyebrow with each color. And then you guys at home can vote on which one looks better. So for this eyebrow here, we'll go with the lighter one, three warm light brown, on this eyebrow over here. You really don't have to press very hard to get the pigment you want here. What's funny is the very first eyebrow product that I bought over a decade ago, I got into makeup around 2008, maybe 2009, 10, 11, around that time. And Benefit was the first brow product that I bought. I'm just doing a bit of a geometry right now because my eyebrows are different shapes, so I have to like trace them out a bit. First brow product that I bought was a Benefit Brow Zing. I think it was called the Brow Zing Kit, and it had two products, I think a wax and then a powder, and it had a little tweezer which i still have from like 2010 or whenever i bought it and had a little i don't know if it had a spoolie or not i think it was just two brushes like this and um that was my first like very first brow product so it's nice that the brow pomades have evolved a lot and i'm really happy to see the spoolie because sometimes you go a little bit where this the flesh is and not where the hair strokes should be so it's just nice to be able to correct it i think the brow pomade will help you get a nice full brow if you want something really precise i think like the precisely my brow or 
something that's like a pencil that's really really fine could be nice so this is supposed to be waterproof and smudge proof i can tell you it's uh, montreal at 40 degrees humidity proof because we're still in a heat wave i my hair is up as you've noticed i'm certain it's just unbearably hot my friend messaged me to let me know that the air is like 94% humidity and I told her yes my hair told me already so yeah it's hot I'm certain you could try to go swimming with the brow pomade I don't think I would but it is supposed to be water resistant so for me this is the good brow I think some people are blessed in life to have just like really great eyebrows they don't have to fill them in they just look beautiful um, for me, like this eyebrow is the better one and this eyebrow over here is the delinquent that doesn't really follow any rhyme or reason. So I always start off with my good eyebrow. I fill it in the shape that I want and then I go over here and try to have this one match that one. And then over top I go into my Dior Show Pump and Brow. It's a tinted brow gel in the shade number two. Now let's go into neutral 3.5, a medium brown. Again, just doing a little bit of slight geometry here just to make sure things look even. Now this is only a difference of 0.5 in color, but it definitely looks darker. I've tested out both off camera and you can see a difference. I mean, I think they could be interchangeable for each other, but you'll see once they're filled in, you'll, you'll notice a difference. Because this one is a bit darker, I find that I'm using less product, like a little bit is going a long way. Okay, and then the little brow gel over top. This just helps set everything and you know just helps with the heat and the humidity all right so what do you think which shade do you like more number three or 3.5 i think personally i'm more used to 3.5 but you let me know which one you like more they're pretty close to each other I think if you didn't know the difference, like if you just saw me in passing at a grocery store, you wouldn't necessarily know, but I think this one looks softer and more natural, and this one looks a bit darker. If you already have a dual-ended brush with the angle side and the spoolie, I don't know if you have to buy the new Benefit one, but you need something with the angle brush and the spoolie. The spoolie is key just to fluff it out and make it look more natural. All right, let's get on to the fun stuff. My Sydney Grace and Temptalia palette. I have the Quintessence Light palette. This is a super fun, super blue, green, colorful palette. I have never tried Sydney Grace products beforehand, but I, I've heard of the brand. I've personally followed the Temptalia blog for I think close to a decade or however long she's been around that's how long I've been reading her blog she's one of the OG original makeup uh, online people like when I was starting to do my makeup and discovering makeup in like the early 2010s 2009s I was discovering people like Temptalia and so when I saw that she was coming out with her own product an eyeshadow palette even though it isn't necessarily like high-end luxury i wanted to support her anyway i just had to buy it and of course i love anything blue and green i'm going to try my best to recreate what i did i do have a pretty good memory so from what i remember i went into parallax and then reaching zenith now i i'd say that the quality here is definitely not luxury it's not like tom ford or anything like that but it's also not bad i think the issues that i had were with the more matte colors just being a little dry not blending as easily as i'm used to with other brands but also i know that like 
it's a different product you know you have to sort of like um adapt your expectations and i think you can work with it and you do get really beautiful like for me the highlights are the shimmery bright colors that's what i bought it for i just you know you need a little something to put in the crease shade here or crease for transition so this one here is just parallax so as i said this is the quintessence i think it's called light yeah quintessence so there's light and then darker formulas for different skin tones which is really nice it's a little bit patchy nothing terrible but i do notice it okay now i'm going into interstellar this is like a dark teal this is a matte that's not the easiest and also when you dip your brush into the palette there's a lot of like fallout so you always have to go like like that I also went ahead and used interstellar on the bottom lash line here as well so i just sort of did like an outline with these colors here and i have to say even though i have like some comments or reservations about the palette i still really like it and temptalia is not like a luxury blog it's a blog about makeup she does review luxury high-end but she also reviews like drugstore more affordable and i think that the point of this palette and this entire collection here was to keep it more affordable that's why she went with sydney grace instead of like tom ford for example i just swatched celestial bloom aura borealis and galactic muse next to interstellar and this is exactly why i bought this palette right here <laughs> these swatches these beautiful sparkle colors are the exact reason why i bought this all right i believe i went into galactic muse next and i just go in dry with these sparkly shades you don't need to wet the brush to get this intense payoff and there is fallout with this so i would definitely recommend doing eyes first and then the face and then i just bring up this sparkly color a little bit higher here and then using celestial bloom on a pencil brush there is so much fallout i need to clean this up and i'll be right back all right let's just do the complexion and i'll finish up the eyes at the end i'm using my chanel vita lumiere aqua in the shade 40. i've had this for a while not that new but it's new to me and i love it this foundation brush here from chanel is new to me i don't think i love it so for some reason as you use it this here i think should go down lower because what happens is oftentimes as i'm applying it i end up like hitting this part here on my skin instead of just the bristles it's okay as a foundation brush i just think that there's like a little design flaw in the engineering and then i'm using my nars concealer in medium one custard and then i'm going into my chantecai perfect blur finishing powder i'm in the shade light medium this was formerly the hummingbird palette but it was so well loved that they brought it back now for the cheek i'm going into my by terry beach bomb palette which i loved right away when it came out and then you know a lot of other products came out in between but i should still give it some love so i'm going to mix the cool and warm blushes here and then add a little bit of the highlighter as well okay so to finish the eyes i'm going into the milky way and this is going in the inner corner to highlight now i'm going to finish it off with some liner this is the chanel stilo waterproof liner in black i'm just going to tight line and then put on the chantecai fossil mascara okay so for the lips i'm going to go with something pretty nude and neutral i'm going in with one of my all-time favorites the chanel le rouge duo ultra tenue and this is the shade intense caramel
Now for the last finishing touch, we have to go into a fragrance. I have here the limited edition Coco Mademoiselle Light Fragrance Mist. This is a bit more lightweight than the Eau de Toilette. You can use this in your hair and body as well. I would call this like a refreshing scent or a scent that you refresh during the day. Perhaps you put on Mademoiselle in the morning and then in the evening you want to just like zhuzh up a bit. I think you go in with this mist here. So I think this is also a great scent for summer in this heat wave. Now let me take my hair down and zhuzh it up a bit as well. <sighs> okay, so I think this look is gorgeous and very pretty, very blue. It matches my jumpsuit here. However, I think the original look may have pulled a little bit more green. I definitely think I went a bit more blue and purple this time. I think the original look had a bit more green maybe on top here, but it's in the same family. This palette does have a lot of fallout, but you know what? If you just need some beautiful shimmering, like flashy bold colors this palette is definitely for you i'm very happy with it once i saw sneak peeks and previews of this palette here i just knew this look was going to be for me and of course now that the entire look is complete let me know which eyebrow do you prefer like which shade i think Hmm. Now that the entire look is done, I notice a little bit less difference, but I still think I'm more partial to this 3.5 shade here. I think it just looks a little bit closer to my natural hair color and maybe just looks closer to the colors I normally use. Let me know in the comments what you think of today's video, what do you think of the products, and leave a comment telling me what other products and combinations you want to see next if you're new to my channel or if you've been watching for a while but just haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for subscribe like leave a comment those are all fabulous ways to encourage me here on my channel so on that note i think this is all i have for you guys for today i thank you all so much for stopping by i hope you have a beautiful day and i'll see you next time bye